traveling to the heart of 1066 country. Will the team unlock the secrets of Pevensey Courthouse? The courthouse is situated in the shadow of Pevensey Castle, the landing site of William the Conqueror in 1066. Dating back to the 13th century, it was once the smallest working jail in England and was used as the town hall until 1886. The courtroom has a dock, cells and an exercise yard, which are still intact, but it also houses the unique Sinkport seal. The courthouse has a long history of alleged paranormal activity and it will be interesting to see what medium Alan Barney will pick up on tonight. On this investigation we are joined by guests Brian Lambert and Jane Cox of UK BPA, the British Paranormal Association, for a night's exploration at this fascinating location. The courthouse dates back from 1520 and is one of the smallest courthouse within the UK. Prior to this, in 1320, it was probably a wattling dot job and with over the years it has altered from being a tailor-made shop to a library to a museum. The residents and the people that volunteered their time here like to call this more of a living history rather than a museum. As the courthouse stands now with you, when you're looking around um, the courthouse would not have looked as it does. If you turn the courthouse right round and put the the condemned box where they would have st stood in to the left where the beagle is which is the original uniform which was last worn in 1886 that's where they would have been led up through facing the magistrate. Apart from being a volunteer at the courthouse which we run ghost nights and help out the volunteers to keep this building open another role of mine is I run and the founder of the UK BPA the BPA is all about bringing paranormal teams together, working together and help come up with wonderful ideas of reducing venue prices, cheaper insurance and working and building relationships. Over my time being here, um, helping out with the paranormal nights and meeting new teams and guests that come here, there's been a lot of activity from in the cell rooms downstairs to the robing rooms and also in the courtroom where I sit now. We had a team in here that focused and picked up one of the mediums that they felt a tight rope around their neck and we could actually hear the creaking off the rope behind us, which was quite eerie at the time. In the robing room to the right of me, there's some scales there, which a nickname are called the scales of justice, but actually they were used for the taxes for the farmers. These seem to move by themselves We've tested them within here with the teams and also guests by jumping up and down on the floorboards trying to make any movement to see if they move with that sort of approach. But they seem to move and pick up readings around them all by themselves. There is a jailer that walks around the courtyard, the courtroom. You know when he's here, the presence of him is very strong. There's an elderly person that stands at the doorway you also know when she's here. With a team consisting of Mandy, Annalisa, Kerry, Medium Alan Barnett and myself, we start off with a walk round the cells. Hey, for, hey ladies, how do you find well, this place? Well, my tummy's so churning in here. Is it? Yeah. Okay. It's like there's another cell, another mm. cell. And I thought, this has got to be it. There's something wrong. Actually, this feels more like an entrance into another cell. I keep getting drawn this way, actually. Through the wall, or just... Yeah, as if there should be something else. Another cell. 
Okay. Sorry. I wasn't sure if it was there. It feels different anyway to what it should have originally felt like. It's like things have been altered down there at some time. It feels like things were changed around from when it was built before it closed. Things were altered, things were completely altered around, you know, in some way. I get the impression of some other man coming through here. Coming through here, it's like he's coming from somewhere there. Coming through here, so it's not this bit, it's that bit. It's, it's again that feeling that there's something more there. Oh, God. Here we are at Pevensey Courthouse. Um, we joined UK BPA. Um, we did an investigation here, also hopefully sort of promote some of their heritage here uh, and save them the, uh, the, the building. Um, and as we started picking up some stuff. And, uh, close up individuals in a minute, see what happens. Um, hopefully you will join us for the night and see what happens. There is more where you want to be, the oldest part, right? Mm -hmm. There. And, and it's like, up this side has been altered and changed. Much more sort of Victorian. And yet that, I feel, down there is... It, it really feels like there's a drastic change in this building. What I keep getting, I don't feel that he's a prisoner actually in any shape. I feel that he, he's running or in charge, you know? Okay. And he, he you know, say jailer, but it's old But that's more, you know? Okay. What Alan's saying, I can agree with. Um, with the movement of this jailer or person coming forward in this direction or be explained later on in the evening. Okay. So we've got Mandy and Kerry, yeah. you're in this little cell here, so you can do a little video in here. Mm -hmm. And we'll be around the corner. Okay. Does anyone else want to come in here with us? Okay. And Lisa's going to come in as okay, well. Yeah, I shall shuffle up. So we'll go outside and go around the back. Okay. There have been stuff in this place of mine. Oh, good. That right hand side of the wall there. Where well, you went before. Yeah. It's, it's just something. Like I say, I can't get the beard. I can get down there and I can get sort of moustache and the, the whiskers down there, but not a beard. I can't get the beard at all. I'm not getting the beard. And like I say, it's a brown dead rape and I keep getting that very strong. It's like he's got this. And he's carrying keys. Carrying keys. Carrying keys. With Alan seeing what further information he can pick up on, the girls, along with Brian, undertake a vigil in the main cell. Uh, I'm not for my clammy turns, Mark. And both Kerry and Alan and Lisa, feel my head if you want, it's real. I've been blowing on it to cool it down. Yeah, you are. Ooh. My top lip's sweaty. Yeah. And I was just sitting where Kerry was and I started feeling like my head was really heavy. So we, so we swapped feel, places to see if Kerry feel, would feel it, I don't, I feel fine. I still feel it a little bit. Okay. Yeah. You know that feeling when you've got like a, a temperature, rather than feeling physically sick, you feel just shaky and not like that kind of feeling? It, it's that, it's not like feeling sick. One of the normal residents, can you come forward please? I mean you no harm. You recognise my voice. We've been down here many times before. Ow! What's the matter? <laughs> you alright? Yeah, something just really punched my shoulder, it felt like. <laughs> it, it could be. You got a little, hold on. A little. It looks like there's something there. Yeah, so it's hard to see now. Yeah, because this light's not natural, is it? Mm. It actually feels like there's a bruise. Scratch. No, a bruise. Bruise. I wouldn't be surprised. Mm. Yeah, you said that before. I mean, it's more it's more beneficial with the women to speak out in these rooms because what does walk here, what we've noticed over the years when we've been doing it, more reactions happen when the ladies speak out. It could be that they don't like females' presence in the room or they're very keen to get to know the females, if you see what I mean. So. The man we keep seeing coming around that corner, it's like he, he sits there there's something else, another cell or whatever, there's more. 
and he sits around there and then he steps out to here to look at something going on here or someone knocking at the door or whatever to come in but he's there that's why he keeps replaying that he comes and shows himself there but it's all happening around there and then I got residual of about five people coming around that corner chained and shuffling being transported was the exact word so I take it first or you know, being moved to another prison or but being transported so I can then take it to a penal colony or whatever they were being moved. We decided to take a break and head back up to the courtroom. So what so you got a no, I've got a mark. Mark. Yeah, no, no, I'm I'm sure. Sure. Yeah. I can't see it. I just warm up can you see it? Just there, Mark. <sighs> see it? Yeah. That way round. And it hurt so much that I thought they were gonna crush my arm. And when we came back up here, I had enormous, great big fingerprints on my arm. And the next morning, I had four bruises of fingerprints. Moving on, the team hold a vigil in the main courtroom. The only thing I picked out was a swirling rush of cold energy that's sort of going now. For the benefits of the viewer, you might hear a little bit of music in the background. That's actually the pub just down the road, and they've got obviously a live band playing. So. Having a great time. Yeah, we we'll sit here. Yeah. We're we'll going to join them in a minute. <laughs> How's it been? Where are you, Dave? So you're down. Yeah, I'm. Okay, down here as well. Right, please. Can you tap, please? If it's a lady, a female entity that lived here and worked here with her husband, can you please tap? Once for yes, twice for no. Make it clear and loud, please. Now I'm about to go down into the cellar in my own dark. Like you did at Wimmering Manor. Lock. With a door lock. Like you did with Wimmering Manor. Like I did at Wimmering Manor. See We'd it. better go now before I change my mind. Come on. Okay, go. Okay, I'm going in this dark, dark cell all by myself. Can't see where I'm going at all. Sorry, Mark, that was a little bit squiffy because I'm trying to see. What I'm doing. Here's my bed. Okay. I'm sitting in this cell all by myself in the dark. Because I is well brave. No, I'm actually not. I'm a little bit nervous. James, if you're here, I've heard that you've been here before. Really like to meet you. Again, I just heard two knocks. I don't know if you can pick it up on the camera. There was another tap there on this, but it's very faint. Thank you if that was you. Can you do it again a bit louder, please? Copy me. Thank you. Please tell me that you can hear this because it's amazing. I feel a little bit nervous, but I'm going to stick it out. I think I just heard it again. It might all be in my head sitting in this dark room all by myself. Well, first of all, it was just like the atmosphere was getting thicker and the air was sort of getting heavy and it was I was getting really hot. And then um, it sounded really loud, like furniture dragging across the floor and footsteps and stuff. And that should hopefully have been caught on the camera before the tape ran out. Where the little window bit is in the door, all around there sort of went black. And uh, around the same time, that's when the door locked. Yeah, we seemed to notice that um, when we pulled the door shut for the lady to go in, we pulled it so it didn't slam shut. It actually was open just enough if you needed to get out in a hurry to come out. Uh, but when we went to let, the, let you out, the door was locked. We know the doors are self-locking, but the door wasn't pulled through to, to lock. We tried it again, didn't we, yeah. to see what would happen. And we done it a couple we of times. We opened it and closed it, opened and closed it, and then it locked again. But without making but it you couldn't hear it lock. Sound. It's only when you went to push it open, you couldn't. There seems to be a quite a lot regarding the way the courthouse is positioned now, how it was then, which we will explain as we go on through the night. 
but they also you heard tapping from underneath the bed. Yeah, there was two, and Kerry was sitting next to me then. You could feel it as well as hear it under your legs. Two distinct, quite loud knocks. But what I found fascinating while he was in there, one was very hot, and the opposite person was stone cold. And we also felt that draft yeah, from when the we, window. When we were, we were sitting outside, when Mandy was inside, and we could feel the draft coming out of the cell through the window. Mm. But it wasn't shut, because you know when that door self locks, mm. you hear it go clock clock, didn't mm. you? It didn't do that, we just pulled it. And the door was actually, you could do that. And I opened all of a sudden when we tried it. When I said someone you else come in. You had to put the key in, mm. and then you heard it unlatch wall, and then the door opened. Mm. The night's investigation draws to a close, as Brian and Jane provide information relating to the evening's events and of the courthouse's paranormal claims. Well, I think tonight's been a really good night, and the people that we've seen here, um, the ladies and Alan and yourself, have picked up on quite a lot of stuff that's happened here and has been reported in the past. We've had some incidents that's happened down in the cells. We've had some stuff that Alan's picked up about the, the way the building layout and yourself has picked up, which we're sort of put together and explain a lot more about the courthouse. As the courthouse stands now, if you pick the whole thing up and turn it around the opposite way, that's how it may have been. Mm -hmm. Because you would not have had um, collected people downstairs marching out onto the street, up the stairs, through a public door, like that. And they definitely would not walk across and part, you know, walk across to the magistrate, they would have been kept separate. Hence the robing room behind us, where you think the magistrate bench would have been here. Alan and yourself have picked up on where you felt the building extends. There would have been another four cells through that wall. The house next door, which would have been the jailer's house, is built on top of them. In the late 1800s, they decided not to have all the cells and the jailer's house was built for here. So it would have been a lot bigger. The things that you've picked up on, which have been really good, Alan's picked up on, was it a lady within? I picked up a lady. <coughs> I, I, I really feel she's linked with the jailer. Yes. You know? We, we've had groups here that picked up, there's been a presence of a jailer that is here. And there's also a, um, a female present, which may have been his wife, that's linked with him, that's also worked here. We also believe that these people, that the jailer and his wife, are not so miss good goody two shoes sort of thing. They were up to no good half the time. The, the metal bench down in the cell, it was used in World War II. They used the cells during World War II as a morgue. They used to lay the bodies out downstairs on the bench. That's why I love it when anybody sits down on it and I go, oh, by the way, the bench you are sitting on will not belong to the morgue. <laughs> Our visit to Pevensey Courthouse have been a very enjoyable experience. Are the spirits that allegedly reside here still making their presence known? It's important to protect England's historic heritage and fascinating buildings like Pevensey Courthouse have to rely solely on public funds and donations to keep it open. It's very important that people come and visit this place. I mean, it can be found on the internet. There's many links out there. But also, the importance of coming here is to keep this building open for over the years. Not only for the history, but also the knowledge that is built within these walls. Over the years that me and my party have been coming here to help out, we've raised thousands of pounds for work to keep the building open. Every year this building needs more work done. So people coming to the place will help keep this building going. We leave the courthouse with many questions, but few answers, as the team wonder where their paranormal travels will take them next. <laughs>